Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have yet another viewer request video um, where today I'm going to be exploring the world of change data capture tools. Um, so I made a video kind of explaining what change data capture is, but today I wanna go through some of the top change data capture providers out there and go through some of the pros and cons of each tool so that you can decide which change data capture tool is best for your use case. Um, and if you're not familiar with what change data capture is, quick, simple graphic up on the screen just to give you a high level. Essentially, it's a tool that will identify and store and capture changes that are made to data in a system that it monitors, right? So it's able to see, hey, what kind of inserts, updates, deletes, you can see the different terms there, um, that were conducted on that table so that you have a record of that, whether it's for auditing purposes, if you need to roll back, number of different reasons why you might want to maintain that information, um, a lot of them regulatory, um, and that is what change data capture tools do, um, is keep a track of all of those different changes to your data so you have that record available to you. So if you like these videos, please like and subscribe, maybe join my Patreon, it helps me out a lot. But without further ado, let's get into it. So now in this list, I, you'll notice I kind of had a bias towards more modern tools uh, because you find more modern tools are able to work with the rest of the modern data stack. Uh, and the first tool I wanna to talk about is Debezium. Uh, and Debezium is an open source Kafka-based tool uh, that had its first release in 2017. And so it is actually built on Kafka Connect and supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, MongoDB, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2. Um, so a lot of the modern databases you might be using. Uh, and what it does is it supports incremental snapshots of your changes that are being propagated by the Kafka queue. And so you can see the Debezium actually uh, reads the changes that are happening before they're fed into the Kafka queue. Uh, and it's open source as well. Um, so it's a very extensible tool. It's been used in production for you know a few years now in a lot of large enterprises. Um, and it's pluggable and plug and play architecture with Kafka Connect makes it a really easy add-on if you're already using Kafka Connect. Um, and then it's got a lot of good community adoption. Their docs are pretty good as well. Um, but Cons are, it's, you know, it's obviously a very Kafka dependent tool, right? If you're not using Kafka, probably not, a, I mean, it's just not a tool for you because it doesn't work outside of Kafka. Um, also doesn't really have the best integration with monitoring and error handling. Um, and in general, you know, it's just very dialed into and focused on monitoring Kafka queues for better or worse. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is S-Story Flow. And uh, S-Story Flow is a fully managed real-time CDC pipeline platform, so real true SaaS CDC platform, released in 2021. Uh, and basically it aims to be, hey, you know, all of your different sources, whether they are MySQL, Postgres, nutritional databases, uh, doing, you know, change data capture, ingestion, you can see, you know, streaming in those changes over time, uh, but also understanding, you know, bringing in batch changes um, and other change, you know, real-time changes from other systems as well, outside of just traditional databases. Um, and then also materializing and, you know, sending the, the updates on what changes occurred, the changes that happened into downstream data or data systems like Snowflake, like BigQuery, uh, and capturing the scheme evolution and change reconciliation all within a single platform. So it means to be, you know, kind of single source of truth for change data capture uh, and, you know, managing all the changes as data flows into your environment. Uh, and also has, you know, as a fully managed offering, has a full CLI UI for pipeline authoring. So you can actually build the pipelines that will, you know, mo basically detect and, and capture those changes to your data. Um, it has both zero code and low code options. So good if, you know, you don't have a lot of coding experience um, and is very focused on, you know, sub-second latency replication and completely managed infrastructure. So you don't need to have Kafka or Flink uh, actually around. You can just use S-Story to manage your, you know, data flows. Um, but with a fully managed platform comes the fact that it's proprietary. There's no open source edition. Um, you do have limited control compared to do-it-yourself do pipelines because it's zero and low code. Um, and then it also doesn't really support a ton of really advanced custom transformations. So it's a good tool if you're looking for something simple out of the box, but not really designed for super complex uh, and customized enterprise use cases. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is called Materialize. Uh, and Materialize is actually a streaming SQL database for real-time change data capture views. So it will consume your data from your streaming engine, from you know Kafka or, or any other you know streaming engine you might be using, and then will maintain an incrementally updated materialized view, which has a history of all of the change data capture that you might have done. 
Um, and so this supports complex joins, aggregations, window functions, uh, and is then also queryable via SQL for real-time analytics uh, and has really strong consistency and exactly one semantics because it is you know, a database uh, being used to actually capture and maintain all this. Um, which then also makes it really great for dashboards and alerts that you might want to build on top of this to monitor your change data, uh, your data changes. Um, however, um, issues, you know, even though it theoretically can support any change data capture stream, it, it's mostly Kafka based. There is limited direct database support that, were, that doesn't require Kafka, but a lot of it, uh, most implementations do require Kafka. Uh, and the more stateful processing requires more capable careful resource tuning um, because you need to make sure you have the right resources to be able to do that stateful processing efficiency efficiently um, and it might require you know if you're using both kafka and other uh, tools like dbzm to ingest uh, change data capture information um, it might actually require separate infra to manage both of those at the same time now the next tool i want to talk about is one of you know kind of the more old school tools um, and that is click replicate um, and this is, you know, very much a enterprise grade commercial offering uh, change data capture tool, um, really targeted towards replications, you know, I'd say less frequent replications um, and more things where, hey, I want to have a batch workload that I then do change data capture on. So I understand what the changes were that that batch workload actually uh, implemented. And, you know, some key features, you know, it basically is designed for really high performance replication from really old school databases um, to more new school databases, you know, so bring or, and even just in between old school databases as well, between DB2, Oracle, SAP, MySQL, Postgres, um, any of those kind of any of those kind of databases, that is really what Quick Replicate was designed to support because that's what was around when Quick, Quick Replicate uh, was built. So if you're working with those old tools, it's really good for that. Um, and it also has a fully GUI-based uh, pipeline management interface. You don't need to do anything really in code if you don't want to. Um, it's all wrapped in a nice, not really nice, but a GUI, um, you know, very old school one at, at albeit. Um, and, you know, it has schema mapping, uh, compression, checkpointing all built in as well. Um, and, you know, on the pro side, it's, you know, you got reliable and mature system with really wide enterprise adoption. Um, it's got good deep integrations with legacy systems, um, and it's also very scalable. Um, it's got robust monitoring and support all out of the box. But on the cons, it's a really old school product. Um, it's very expensive. It's priced for large enterprises. It's at the point in its, uh, you know, kind of life cycle where they're just really trying to get money from people for using it. Um, it's also cl very close sourced, very not customizable, um, and is a much more heavyweight solution than, you know, some of the other cloud native tools I've discussed. Now, the next and final tool I want to talk about is Rising Wave. Um, and this is honestly less of a native change data capture tool. It's more of a streaming SQL database that can ingest all your change data capture streams, whether from, from Kafka or Pulsar or Red Panda, and then allow you to do real-time SQL analytics on that change data capture data and materialize views that will update continuously as your data changes. Um, so it's not so much a change data capture tool but it does have a lot of tools that will integrate with other options for change data capture to allow you to visualize all that information and collect it all in one database and in one location. Um, and some of the pros of this tool is, you know, it's got a very familiar Postgres di dialect for analytics teams. It's very much just a purpose built for ingesting and visualizing the data from streaming workloads and bringing it out to downstream applications as well. Um, and reduces the need for more complex ETL pipelines. It's you know very much kind of a drag and drop, or not drag and drop, but it's less heavyweight on the code aspect um, uh, of, of things. And it's more about, hey, you know this is an easy tool for people to start supporting real-time dashboards. Um, but it's a very young project that just came out in 2022. So it's cool, it's a nice little flashy feature, but it doesn't have a lot of the integrations um, that more mature change data capture tools might have. And also, is reliant on external change data capture publishers uh, rather than being able to be a publisher itself. So those are all the change data capture tools that I found that I thought were worth talking about. Um, if you have another one that you want me to talk about, add it in the comments below. I'll make a video on it. Um, but I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Day guy out.